Hi, welcome to the Boston Roll channel. I'm your host, Brian Koval. Before we get started, make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons. If you want to see me play your favorite deck or your spicy brew on the channel, I take donation deck lists. I'll do a deck tech, play a full Magic Online League, and help tune your list. If that sounds good, check out my contact info. It's in the video description below. Now let's go play some Magic. Welcome to the Boston Roll channel. Today I'm playing Modern, and this is a donation deck from Abed. And Abed has given me Jeskai Tempo. So this is a deck that wants to get ahead and stay there. So basically, Dreadhorde Arcanist is the engine here. Uh, Band and Legacy, too good there. And we're trying to replicate the effect here. So the thing about Dreadhorde Arcanist is that every turn that your opponent doesn't answer it, it buries them in cards. And... Because it's a 2-drop, it demands that they have an answer immediately and spend a development turn answering this. So this puts a lot of pressure very early. Compared to Legacy, the modern cantrip is kind of embarrassing, of course. Uh, Opt and Thought Scour are no Brainstorm and Ponder, not even close. But we're going to do our best. Um, the cards in the deck are built to press an existing advantage, which is... Kind of a balls to the wall strategy. Um, if we fall behind, there's not a whole lot of ways to catch up. Uh, basically, what we're trying to do is get enough damage in before the opponent stabilizes that we can finish them out with Lightning Bolt and Snapcaster Made. Lightning Bolt, Snapcaster, and Lightning Helix to burn them out afterwards. Um, the, the I've made a couple changes to the deck since Abed gave it to me. Uh, Abed had. 2 Remand, 2 Mana Leak, and 3 Dreadhorde Arcanist. This deck needs Dreadhorde Arcanist to, to stay competitive. Uh, you want this on turn 2 every time, so I just up that to 4. I also cut the other Mana Leak for a 3rd Remand. Um, a lot of people ask me when I play Modern Blue decks, like, why aren't you playing Remand? And it depends on what your deck wants to do. Like, Mana Leak is much better in a deck like Blue Black Fairies, which is a deck I trophied with a couple weeks ago, because... Fairies needs to answer things permanently. Uh, this deck just needs to answer things long enough to do 20 damage. So Remand uh, is kind of like Time Walk if you're already beating down with Dreadhorde Arcanist or Geist of St. Traft. Mana Leak can get awkward in a mid-game. It isn't very good at countering Lightning Bolt, which is a good card against Dreadhorde Arcanist. It isn't good at countering Path to Exile, but uh, Remand at least replaces itself on the way through so uh we just want everything to have forward velocity here so i've added a threat added a cantrip and cut a mana leak from the original list i also tweaked the sideboard a little bit this deck can totally support blood moon so i threw one of those in there there are five basic lands including three islands you can still cast all your spells with a blood moon if you think about it a little bit uh plan for it I added Ashiok Dream Render. That goes with the Blood Moon. I'm really worried about the lands-based matchups, uh, the Primeval Titan decks. Uh, I think that those are the kind of decks that could overpower us pretty quickly. The sideboard is tough for a league play because you never know what you're going to run into in a league, and this is so customizable. Uh, the, the sideboard that Abed sent me clearly did not want to lose to Red Prowess or Death Shadow. Like It, it just had like... Mono removal spells, double celestial purge, uh, the timely reinforcements, etc. And I think that's a reasonable place to start. Those are the decks that can get ahead of us. And like I said, we're not good at playing from behind. So I think that makes sense to answer those. And then we have a bunch of answers to the big mana decks that can go over the top of us. And if they stick something like a Worm Coil Engine or a Karn, we're probably in trouble. So that's where I've gone with the sideboard. But there's a lot of customization that you can do over there. But overall, this strategy is a classic. Uh, Geist of St. Traft was always in decks when it was in standard. Uh, there have been Jeskai modern control decks in the past. This one is just has its foot on the gas a little harder than normal. So let's try it out. We are on the play against a Lurus deck. This one lander is dangerous. Uh, I would kind of love this hand with... Replace any of these cards at random with a second land, and we get to jam turn to Arcanist, but I don't think I can keep this as it stands. Alright, cool. <laughs> That's basically exactly what I asked for. So I'm going to keep this. I'm going to send Spell Queller to the bottom. And I have 
opt into double arcanist here. That's a, a pretty strong start. I'm into it. Yeah, the like I said in the deck tech, the cantrip suite in modern is not what it is in legacy, and maintaining fuel for the arcanist is gonna be important. So I think I should shock in Hallowed Fountain. Because I am planning on playing this opt, so it's in the graveyard for my arcanist. Now let's see what flavor of Lurus they are. Oh, a mill flavor. Uh, that I'm not sure who that's good for. Uh, like, my Arcanist is gonna have plenty of food. So, uh, Rocker and Triome. I'm gonna bottom that. I don't think I'm gonna have time for an ETB tapped land this game. I am gonna play around. Archive trap for as long as I can. So drawing that steam vents was a blessing. Yeah, if I can get a Teferi into play before I have to crack my Scalding Tarn, that'll be a big game. Oh, geez. <laughs> okay, that's not a fetch land. Sweet relief. And they are targeting me. So this is not some sort of like graveyard deck. They are actually here to mill. Let's see if my Dreadhorde Arcanist is going to get to activate. Or if they have Surgical. I'm going to opt because uh, Tome Scout or Thought Scour just helps them. All right, so they do have Surgical. Oh, Cling to Dust, even better. Cool. So I didn't Teferi pre-combat, and I'm not sure why. Like, that would have actually let me do my thing. Yeah, that was just a punt. I guess I was deciding if I wanted to second Dreadhorde or play Teferi. I actually think the second Dreadhorde is pretty nice. Like, I don't think I'm backpedaling to cover my punt here. Uh, and, like, I don't actually think that was a punt. Uh, I, I think that the second Arcanist actually just makes more sense. Because I can Teferi next turn plus fetch while I'm protected from Archive Trap. And if they want to mill me, they have to feed my Arcanist. Finding some lightning bolts would be pretty great in the graveyard. Yeah, now now we're in kind of an awkward position where they don't really want to feed my my guys, but their deck only does one thing. I'm excited to see how they play this. They don't know they're going to Teferi Town next turn. Visions. Oh, the old one-card visions. Not bad. But there's a fetch land, so we are milling 12 here. Found a lightning bolt. I really hope they don't have surgical for lightning bolt, because uh, that is kind of important to my ability to win the game. Uh, Geist, Opt. Alright, my graveyard is full of one mana spells now. I just need to not die before I cast them. Alright, I'm going to Teferi pre-combat now to lock in my Dreadhorde Prophets. Fatal push in response, okay. Sucks, but okay. Oh god, if they have two, I don't think we can ever win. Now I'm hoping this is cling to dust. Surgicaling my bolts, okay, fuck. That's the thing I didn't want them to do, specifically. All 
Alright, so Teferi at least turns off Archive Trap, like I said. And I get to fetch. I hope there are still fetchable lands left in my deck. There should be a lot. I'm not actually worried about that. I'm going to put Trium into play, tapped, and then attack and cast Opt. Yeah, this deck, this game is going to be really hard to win now that I don't have bolts. I have to get through these two O2s. This Force of Negation is actually going to be pretty nice. I'm not going to need a second to ferry, I don't think. Uh, I, th I should probably minus... All right. Awkward. <laughs> the, we've played against a deck with main deck Graveyard Hate in our first match with our Graveyard Fueled Tempo deck. All right, there's a Path to Exile. That can get rid of a crab. Maybe. Unless they're about to, like, snapcast or surgical me. Mesmeric Orb. Yikes. Yeah, that's a no-go. Okay, so what threats remain in my deck? So... Uh... One Dread Horde Arcanist is still left. There's one Geist of Saint Trav, two Spell Quellers, both my Brazen Borrowers and my Vendillion Click. So I think that with that information, no, I am going to Path to Exile one of the Crabs. I feel like their most reasonable path to victory right now is just milling me out by hitting land drops. So let's work through that. Awkward, but it does feed the next one. All right, I found a second path. Uh, they milled a Snapcaster. So with that second path, the crabs are under control. Uh, a hardcast archive trap is a problem. Uh, I need to... Oh, come on. <laughs> I just took a line to make that not happen. Drown in the lock. Uh-oh. Okay, so now we, we're going to have to just straight up top deck a threat. But the good news is they're also top decking. So if I find something like Geist, <laughs> that's the thing I wanted. So Geist can actually reasonably punch through in a timetable that works for me. So they're on a four turn clock right now and they have to be chumping with crabs to save the extra two damage. Oh no, if this is visions, we're in trouble. Ugh. I really needed them not to draw Ancestral Recall right now. Because Lurus is also pretty good at checking Geist eventually. That's like the only thing that's good to get that checking Geist, but they don't need to check it very long. I only have nine cards left in my deck. So yeah, that Visions of the Beyond is going to be the game ender. They just milled two of my 3-1 flyers also. Oh, they just have Archive Trap also. Right, they paid four mana into something. Cling. Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, this is bad. 
Yeah, if they had just drawn like a land or something normal, but can't beat Ancestral Recall when we're on the, the close board like that. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I lose to a fetch land. Even if I get this colonnade into play, I guess I'll attack and see if they mess up. I don't know how they could possibly mess up. Right, so they're at eight. I guess they are, by not blocking, that does put them dead to Geist plus Colonnade. So they do have to mill me for the full eight this turn to kill me. So you're saying there's a chance. Uh, but they could cling to dust a creature and just gain three life and then I can't do anything. So I guess there is like a small window where this is possible. Uh, Field of Ruin mills for 12, so now we're dead. Okay. Fine. All right, so let's see what the sideboard has to offer. Uh, a braid is pretty important. Like if they, if they don't have the crabs, then they don't do anything. Uh, Celestial Purge, I don't think matters. Their permanents are blue and artifacts. Yeah, Braid also hits Mesmeric Orb. It's a pretty big game. Jace the Mind Sculptor is really slow, unfortunately. Um, Ashiok turns off their fetch lands, which could be a big deal. Unfortunately, Ashiok can't exile your own graveyard. Uh, it, mil tar it mills target player for four, then exile opponent graveyards. So I can't like control their visions of beyond with my Ashiok. That's not a thing. Damning Sphere doesn't matter. Timely doesn't matter. Gus doesn't matter. Jace is a maybe. I think they had too many basics for Blood Moon, though Blood Moon is good at turning off their fetches, same as Ashiok. But Blood Moon slows me down significantly, where Ashiok doesn't. So... All right, what are the the cuts? This is the hard part because I do actually need to win this game. I like force of negation. I, like I don't think I can cut a threat. Teferi's very good. Um, maybe remand is not what I want because remanding archive trap is is kind of sad. Uh, Thought scour also. Although it is important to have cantrips for the Dreadhorde Arcanist, I think that having Thought Scour in your deck against a deck like this is probably low value. And I can always target them to mill and just use it to draw a card, which is a reasonable thing to do. Do I cut, do I cut another Thought Scour for a Jace? The only time Jace is going to be good is on a stable board where I can Fate Seal them and keep myself from losing like, is that enough I don't think so yeah I'm gonna submit this deck yeah crab being a 0-2 lining up perfectly with Dreadhorde Arcanus 1-3 is rough stuff uh, okay we have the turn 2 Arcanus I'm gonna keep unfortunately this hand plays directly into Archive Trap, and I don't think there's much I can do about it. Uh, the one thing I can do about it is fetch in their upkeep before they draw a card. That gives them one less chance to have Archive Trap. If they have it, they have it, but uh, I guess I'll get my Triome, get my colors perfect. In their upkeep versus my turn doesn't actually matter. I'm just they're mostly the same. Yeah, there it is. They hit a little bit of everything. Both my forces of negation are gone. Oh god, they had two. <laughs> Great. Well, that's why that card is good. So now the question is. Do I bolt this crab? And I'm pretty sure the answer is no. I think I play Dreadheart Arcanus and hope that they don't mill a lightning bolt and extract it 
before I get to my next turn. Like, I think winning this game with a flurry of lightning bolts off of Dreadhorde Arcanist is my likely path to victory. Oh, they milled a bolt. <laughs> Alright. So, I'm gonna bolt the crab. Uh, or do I play that same turn again? Yeah, play the same turn again. Like, I... It's tough because playing to not lose against a combo deck, which Mill is ultimately a combo deck, like, playing to not lose against a combo deck is better than like sometimes playing to win ends up punishing you i'm playing to win right now all right yep i'm drowned hopefully i draw a land so i can just do both things okay cool All right, so 17 cards left in my deck to deal 18 damage. Uh, seven cards left in my deck. Running out of time here. So I think I just have to start bolting. Just attack and lightning bolt them. So zap you there. Uh, my deck does not contain anything like spell pierce. And the snapcaster, if I had a second, fourth land, snapcaster for two would be nice, but as it stands, I'm probably just going to lose to like literally any spell. Okay, they had to lure us. That's nice. So, end of turn, I can snap bolt. And then I can bolt attack DHA bolt. Uh, blue mana is required for this. This gets blown out by surgical because if they surgical my lightning bolt from the graveyard, they also get the one from my hand. I guess that's not necessarily true. I can cast the one from my hand. Oh, uh, fuck. Yeah, that jacks up my whole plan, though. That's one, two, three, four, five, six. That's six damage they're not going to take just this turn. Yeah, I'm not sure how I get over the finish line. They need to brick pretty hard. Five cards in my deck. So cantrips are dangerous. They can cast Luris, play, uh, they can pick up Oboro. Yeah, if they have a land, I basically just lose. Is it possible that it's right to just not Arcanist? I mean, I'm sure it, it is possible. Let's see, can I quickly figure out what's left in my deck? Um... It should be pretty easy to figure out what's left in my deck. Uh, I'm what I'm doing right now is looking for important cards that like ones that deal damage. So both my helixes are gone. My bolts are in exile. One click, one borrower, or both borrowers, both geists, both quellers. I I think I boarded one out. No. All right. So is there a queller left in the deck? Queller. Queller. I am playing three of that card, right? Yes, okay. So there is a Spell Queller left in the deck. So that's something to opt looking for. That one could actually win me the game. Bottom. A. Well, that's a Spell Queller. Let's see if it's good enough. 
So they cast Luris, I queller it, then they don't get Hedron Crab, and their hand is blank, and then I win <laughs> over the next two turns. That's my plan, but it's all I've got. Yeah, so if Luris Crab Land is their plan... Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Uh, taking those bolts was the worst. Is there a Snapcaster left in my deck? One, two. Uh, no, there's not. Targeting Spell Queller. God, they're too smart. All right, yeah, my opponent actually knows how to play Mill. That sucks. So if they have, like, Deterministic Lethal, then I just lose right now. Luris, Crab, Land. Okay, they didn't have the Land. How do I win? I don't know. Because they can pick up Oboro and play that as their land next turn. Okay, there is a Path to Exile in my graveyard. And a Teferi in my hand. They are at one life more than I need them to be. Braid, a braid, a braid. All three of braids are gone. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Uh, three of the last four cards in my deck are lands. Well, that sucks. All right. So I can path crab, bounce Luris, and hope they have nothing. Like literally nothing. All right. I can't path Luris because then Crab gets a land drop and Oboro kills me with Crab, so I need to bounce Luris. There is not another Crab in the graveyard. All right, so bouncing Luris. Path to Exile. Well, they're at one. But I have two cards in my deck. We know their hand is not a land, and one of the cards is Luris, so they have a spell in their hand. Oh, one of us is dead. I just need to hope that their hand is full of blanks. Oh, God. Ancestral Recall, once again, breaking it wide open, as it does tend to do in Magic the Gathering. Oh, all right. Now you're just showing off. Well, Archive Trap doesn't work. They don't have the mana for that. Uh, Adrian Crab, and then Oboro's right there, so I am dead on board. <laughs> okay. All right. Tough matchup. Yeah, that uh, starting hand double archive trap ended up being insane. If I had 13 more cards in my deck there, then I win the game. But of course I didn't. They did a really good job with their surgicals as well. So uh, it, it's not like we didn't play a good game. Uh, that's just a tough matchup and they played it well. On to the next one. We're on the draw in round two against another Luris deck. I'm going to keep this. It has my mana and a bunch of interactive spells. And the ghost with the most. This looks like this one is not Mill. It's looking like uh, Rakdos or Jund Shadow. 
Probably gonna lose my ghost here. Yup. This crazy art thoughts is and this is the, the box topper, I think, from Ultimate Masters? Double Masters. I don't know. Your head is a puzzle, and this little fairy just took a piece. Adorable. Oh, they took remand. Interesting. So they're planning for some sort of longer game, which I'm a little surprised by out of a deck with Luris in it, but I guess it's okay. I'm in. I can snap that remand eventually if the game goes too long. If they have Tarmogwife here, I'm in a lot of trouble. It's, uh, there's only two paths in the deck, and Tarmogwife is huge. Didn't want that damage. They must have misclicked, because they floated red, cast Bobble, then cast a creature with prowess. So I, I assume that was a misclick. Hopefully I stabilize at one life. Teach him. And so I've been getting Triome in all these matchups, and that's because the matchups are, are fast. If you're going to play a super long game, then sometimes you just want to fetch normal Shocklands, and you can uh, leave the Triome in your deck to draw later and cycle. If you think that cashing in a land for a spell in the late game for three mana is going to be something important in the matchup. But against the Monastery Swift Sphere and Hadron Crab decks, that's that hasn't come up yet. So just having good mana is more important. So I played the Mountain. They don't know about the Flooded Strand, and I'm likely to Brazen Borrow and bounce something this turn. So I, if I'm going to use the mana anyway, then uh, I'll just hide my information. So I'm going to Blockers uh, before I bounce. All right, now I have priority. So I can leave Swiss Beer in play take two, and bounce whatever they play after. Yeah, I think if they have a follow-up Tarmogoy for Dash Shadow, I would rather bounce that. Two damage isn't that much. I can live with it. Croxa. All right. It's a Croxa shit. Ha 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 ha. All right. Uh, I think that Snapcaster Mage is... Though Spell Queller also isn't great. Um, and they know about it too. They saw it with Bobble. So I'm actually going to tap out this turn for Geist. So there's not a whole lot of reason to... No, actually, I have two Snapcasters. I'm going to discard one of those. If I discard the Queller, then they can stop playing around it. And hopefully they'll have to do something weird if they know that I have Queller. Bouncing a haste creature never feels great, but they missed a land drop, so hopefully this slows them down, makes them play awkward. And it also just puts my 3-1 flyer on notice. Pretty sure I just jammed Geist this turn. Oh, Teferi's good. I'll let them escape the Croxa before I worry about Teferi, though. So now the question is basic island or shock damage. So basic island casts all of the double mana spells. The only double mana cost in the deck is blue. I have a, a couple of blue spells, including the one currently on suspend. Though Snapcaster is an honorary double mana spell, but I have... Trium and basic island cast the front half of Snapcaster and Trium can cast whatever's on the back end. So yeah, I'm just gonna grab the basic. Alright, the ghost with the most. Now it's time to pivot into tempo. Uh, I have a real threat in play that can end the game very quickly. 
I have a flyer on suspend and they know about spell queller and snapcaster. They don't know about Teferi. That was kind of interesting that they would do that in my end step and not my the beginning of my turn. I'm trying to think of why they would do that. Like playing around a top deck Narset. Is that a card they're worried about me having? Lightning Bolt themselves. All right, so they're casting a Death Shadow this turn. Oh, this Teferi is going to get hungry. So I guess I have to figure out how the best way to play this turn. Uh, so I can just pass, play Brazen Borrower, and they have to stay on defense or else they just die. Or I could Teferi, keep my forward momentum, crunch them for six, put them to four. That means them dead to an angel, so yeah. That's what I'm going to do. They're going to get a huge Death Shadow, but being dead on board to my Angel in a deck that's notoriously bad at answering Flyers. Let's do that. The Swift Spear, unfortunately, can clean up the Teferi. But if they want to play Swift Spear to answer Teferi and get their Death Shadow back into play, that's all their mana. Unless they draw a land. And they are... Most of their lands hurt them, so uh, that makes Lightning Bolt or Lightning Helix live draws to end the game. And also, Brazen Bar is still over here. Alright, we did it. Unstoppable Geist of St. Traft. Alright, so this is definitely one of the matchups uh, that Abed had in mind with the the sideboard plan that I was originally sent. The second Celestial Purge would be pretty nice here, but uh, timely reinforcements. I will basically never have less life than my opponent, but if I do, I'm in trouble. Uh, but I could frequently have fewer creatures. Um, I don't Blood Moon's interesting because the Rakdos version of this deck plays Blood Moon itself, uh, or it can play Blood Moon, but the Jun version is probably in some trouble to it. Aether Gust hits the red half of the deck. Oh, and the green half. So, yeah, if they have Tarmogoyfs and shit, I probably do want Aether Gust. It doesn't hit Death Shadow, which is kind of a problem. So, Force Negation, not great. I do like all of these other things. Remand is actually not great in this matchup. It's only good against Croxa specifically. Do I want Surgical Extraction? I don't think so. Like it's only, I I, I guess they have the the Bobbles, the Luris, and the Croxa. So Surgical could play, but that's sort of a late game thing, and neither of us are really trying to get to a late game. I could play Ashiok uh, as just like some soft graveyard hate and also mess up their fetch lands. Yeah, like the the cool thing about Jun Shadow as a deck is that like uh, this doesn't hit the green card, this doesn't hit the black card, this has some utility but it's not super great, this might get three one ones, but it's not going to gain six life. So they're very good at splitting the answers people might have. So I think I want all my remands out, more removal in. Teferi is not actually great. He's just fine. Braid is also not great. All right, Blood Moon's coming in. All right, here's my plan. Just, I'm just going to bring in a little bit of everything. Take out my, my shitty counter spells and bring in one of each card that might do something. And hope that I get two of them that overlap in the correct way to check what my opponent's up to. Hey. <laughs> this combo so well with Blood Moon. I'm going to keep this hand, though. 
I only play two Path to Exile, so having one against the creature deck is pretty cool. And Lightning Bolt's probably better in the early turns. Yeah, ramping them, not exciting. I feel like a big part of my win last game was that they never had more than two mana. Ooh, Helix is hot. So I could play Spire Bluff Canal and opt. Or I could... I think I'm going to run out my Blooded Strand. And that gives me the option to fetch Basic Island and Opt or Basic Plains and Path, depending on how this turn looks. And both of those help me set up my Blood Moon. Like, I'm not going to be, like, digging for Blood Moon. It's just a card that I want to be able to jam if I do draw it. All right, so they shocked in a land and attacked for one all the same. Black, black. Scourge. Okay, uh, I can kill this with Lightning Helix. I can actually sweep their board with Lightning Helix next turn. I fetch to 17. This becomes a 3-3. Three, three. I Helix this. This dies because I'm at 20. So that means I need to get a white source with my Flooded Strand. And I can't shock. So I'm actually just going to get Hallowed Fountain. Or do I just get Basic Planes and run it? Basic Planes. If I'm getting Basic Planes, I can fetch on my turn. All right, let's have a look. This is going to be a blowout. Unless they can... No, Cycling Street Wraith doesn't even matter because my life total is higher. So do I get Basic Planes planning for Blood Moon, or do I get... Rothran Triome to just set up my mana. Yeah, I'm just going to get Triome. I'm going to play normal. If I'm going to get this juicy two for one, I don't need to do anything fancy. Spire Bluff Canal coming in clutch. The painless red source we were looking for. Red. Oh, that one has to tap for white. Ah, <laughs> Plague Wind. Love it. All right, now I have Snap Path or Snap Cantrip all set up to transition into a mid game where I'm just a control deck. The Blood Moon will still play if I draw it. It'll just take a little more setting up. But I feel like we've converted pretty well into the, the mid game here. Depends how many shadows they, they drop right now. Right, basic Island is nice. Uh, I'm going to play my fetch land and Fetch for Basic Island also. I don't want to play this one out. Uh, like, I do want to get Basics into play. Maybe I should be opting. Yeah, I'm going to fetch a Basic and opt right now on my turn because I do have cards that I want to play main phase. Like, if I come up with a Dreadhorde Arcanist here, that might be something I want to put into play in the main phase. Um... Do I Lightning Bolt this Shadow while I still can? Uh, I get blown out by Street Wraith if I make that play. So I'll just save the Lightning Bolt for Luris. I'm eventually going to have to deal with that thing. And also Bolt Snap Bolt is a, a reasonable win condition if they start to push in on this Death Shadow, shredding their life total. See if they want to make a move here. Yeah, I'm just going to path. I have Snapcaster. Like, I'm pretty well lined up to deal with the second wave of threats as well. Uh, 
Oh, they have the sweet Seb McKinnon secret layer swamp. Thing does look cool. I just can't imagine buying like 18 secret layers so you have enough of them. In, in a deck like Death Shadow, it doesn't matter because you only play the one. So do I start the... Uh, I'm going to Thought Scour. Yeah, I was about to like, do I just bolt their face? No, I Thought Scour myself. So I can leave up Bolt and Snap Path, which should answer most of... It answers the Lurus and whatever they play off the Lurus. So hopefully this is where I turn the corner and start applying damage. Like I have to survive their Lurus plus uh, Swift Spear this turn. And then I turn the corner and start applying damage on my turn. Alright, yep, there's Swift Spear. Alright, so Snapcaster, Target Path. I guess I could target Helix, uh, though. Is that good? Yeah, that seems pretty good. But then they could, like, Colagon's Command their Lurus back to their hand if I don't path it. But if they have another land, that kind of sucks. I could also just go face with Lightning Helix and then. Bolt Luris on my turn. No, that doesn't make any sense. I am going to Helix the Luris. If they have time to set up like a K command loop, then I've done something wrong. And hopefully I can just race this Swift Spear. I'm not going to trade off with it because I do want to be pushing for damage and winning this game. And I still have Bolt if I need to kill it. Alright, that's nice. That's an extra big chunk of pressure. So I put them to 9 with this attack. Bolt puts them to 6. I cast Brazen Borrower, attack for uh, 7 flying next turn. Yeah, I'm just going to leave up Bolt and Borrower for, for this turn. Another land. More damage for them when we're in a damage race. That's fine. A Lightning Helix is fucked up against Scourge of the Skyclaves. Like, it just outright killed this one for free, and they have five cards in their hand and haven't played a spell in a little while. Or, they played the Lurus last turn, but I wonder if they have any Skyclaves in their hand. Wow, just nothing go. You love to see it. So let's see if they have an answer for this. They're bolting my borrower, that's fair. That's also an instant speed prowess trigger that they're not going to have on their turn. Uh, so I'm now not representing lethal anymore, so I'm going to sit on my bolt for a minute. So I could spend a turn to ferrying, and what that does is it means that like Fatal Push and stuff don't hit my Colonnade anymore. So I'll... Alright, and Teferi Resolving means that the Swiss Spear is just a trade in combat. I think this should actually bounce Snapcaster. Or I can bolt Swift Spear, attack for two, and then bounce Snapcaster. I think that does the most. Uh, 
It does play into a discard spell. But I'll have to live with that. Yeah, I wish I had three mana up still. I didn't play a, a tap land or anything that turn, so just was one mana short. Trophy my Teferi. <laughs> well, that gives me the three mana up for Snapcaster. Deal. So I'm going to Snap Bolt in the end step, and then Colonnade is representing lethal. That was a questionable trophy, but I guess uh, it makes sense. Teferi did his job because they could have trophied the Colonnade. Alright, so I think I just want to fire in. I'm going to shock this in because Colonnade has Vigilance, and if they destroy it before they're dead, I can V-click. Alright, cool. Out controlled Death Shadow. Love it. Next round. Right, I'm on the draw against a Yorion deck. I don't know what flavor yet, but I'm already jealous. I love Yorion so much. I've kept this perfectly reasonable uh, Dreadheart Arcana Spell Queller Geist Hand. This is Tempo AF. Finding Opt off the top would be a big deal, but that's really the only thing I could ask for. This hand mostly does what I need it to. Let's say Yorion Ponza deck. Or is that just a generic ramp spell these days in modern? So this is a matchup where I might consider leaving the Triome in my deck for later. Uh, or I can just get my mana right right now. Uh, I think that just the texture of my hand and the way this deck actually plays. Oh, there's the opt right on time. Um, I'm actually thinking there won't be a whole lot of opportunity to leave Triome in the deck. Just like, you're going to want to curve out and use all your mana as much as possible, and that's just what this deck is about. All right, so this looks like some sort of uh, like Kiki Pile sort of deck. A Lightning Bolt will be good here, especially if I can cast two of them. All right, what's the the get with Stoneforge? B Skull. All right, so I think this is a Lightning Bolt turn. As much as I would like to put Geist of Saint Traft into play. This batter skull will be a problem sooner than later. So lightning bolt, stoneforge mystic. I guess I can opt and don't need this land. And then I can opt on the flashback as well, saving my lightning bolt. They did miss a land drop, which makes me think that maybe going after Goose had some validity. But I do like maintaining the forward velocity of cantripping when I can. And Goose is ultimately an enabler, and if they're a, a creature, blinky creature deck, I'm eventually going to find something good and play to bolt. So I think that's fine. Skyclave Apparition. Well, they figured it out. Uh, so I have Brazen Borrower to get a 2-2 out of that. That's not really the answer you want, but it's okay. Don't, don't think I'm going to need two of these. That is a legend. All right. Speaking of legends, there's Dreadheart Arcanist. So I could... Arcanist plus leave up Brazen Borrower. I could play Geist. I could... Yeah, I think just getting the Arcanist back into play 
is the most important thing here because that has the lightning bolt which can clear this apparition for good and i shocking this in tells them that i have some sort of two drop do they attack nope I'm going to scour myself while we're here. Juice up that graveyard. If they path, I think I am going to force it. Or is this Resto Angel? Lightning Helix. Okay, so I am going to force that. Just figuring out what I'm going to pitch. I think it's... Geist, because they have this Wall of Blossoms in play. Uh, Queller and Brazen Borrower let me play at instant speed. Yeah, I'm going to pitch Geist. Sorry, Saint Traft. Oh, nice. Found a backup force. This is going well. So I'm going to Bolt Apparition. Getting through this wall of blossoms for to push actual damage is proving to be somewhat frustrating, but it's not a huge deal. What is this? Cord for two? Um, what can they do with that? Uh X is two, which means that's a five drop, which is too big for Queller. Yeah, I'll just force it. Get out of here. The Brazen Borrower will be really good against the Batter Skull. Like getting getting rid of the germ token. Something I'm into. I'm gonna shock this in again. Alright, one, two, three, four. Let's hope they just land shock jam batter skull. Alright, they're not batter skulling. Do they have another cord? What's the play? They must have something, because they didn't put Yorion in their hand, they didn't jam Batter Skull. Resto Angel. Alright, Queller. Let's put an end to that. At least for now. Alright, we're going to start actually pushing damage now. Uh, so, I do still have my land drop. Do I want to fairy? Oh, wow, they're conceding. <laughs> oh, oh, that was tempo as fuck. All right, Blood Moon's going to be insane in this matchup. Uh, a braid looks pretty strong. Aether Gust. Ashiok. Uh, they do seem like they want to search their deck quite a bit. But how many core, like... They're going to have four cords, but they're also an 80-card deck. I would have said Force of Negation isn't great, but both of them came in clutch that game. Though, now that I have Gust, that can hit the Helix. Yeah, I don't think I actually need Force of Negation in the deck. Geist seems actively bad against how many creatures they have. Like, Geist is good when they can't deal with a 2-2 Hexproof, but if they could just, like, block it with some random shit or flash in uh, Resto Angel, those things are, are not where I want to be. So Remand... I'm not going to cut Remands, because I think Remand is better than Aether Gust in general in this matchup. So... I think this lines up pretty well. Uh, is there another cut for an Aether Gust? I don't think I'm going to get both in because I do need to maintain the, the forward pressure of my deck. Uh, Teferi seems really good. Though, is it... I think Aether Gust being a surprise is worth a lot too. Like being able to play at instant speed was a big part of the last game. And I'm gonna go 
one viewer to ferry and see how that goes. I don't think I want timely reinforcements because even if I get the the three creatures, they're not going to do much in this matchup, and your life total basically doesn't matter. I feel like we are going to win or lose these games in a landslide. Whoa. All right, just got to survive long enough to Blood Moon them. Because I think this uh, four-color Yorion pile is going to struggle against Blood Moon pretty bad. Unless they can get a bunch of mana creatures into play, then, then maybe not. But All right, basic island is a great find. But I'm still going to lead on Spire Bluff Canal. Like, I could play this island after the Blood Moon. There's no reason to make my mana worse up front. Alright, something, something. Alright, Eternal Witness to hit your land drop, deal. The things you have to do when you register an 80 card deck. I don't need that. Holidayed, awkward. Remand's pretty nice though. Alright, uh, Sea Chrome Coast. So, hopefully, we get a pretty big remand off this turn, but they're untapping into four mana. Like, Resto Angel flickering. Uh, okay, that's awkward because they can just replay the thing. But. I don't think Remand's getting better. Like, if this entices them to fetch Shock another land... Alright, so it we're going to be playing Dual Dax Blood Moon vs. Batterskull. And they did pick white with their Utopia Sprawl, so they can still activate Mystic post-Blood Moon. So I need an answer to Batter Skull, and then we might be good. So I could bolt Stoneforge Mystic now, so the Batter Skull never gets into play. But Bolt Snap Bolt also answers Batter Skull. Yeah, I'm going to sneak this in right now while I know it's going to be good. I know they have a fetch land in their hand from the Eternal Witness earlier. They could actually just cast Batter Skull if they have use, if they want to attack for one extra damage. Okay, so that Blood Moon was definitely an investment in the future. I could have bolted uh, Stoneforge, and I just didn't. Speaking of investing in the future, here is Dreadhorde Arcanist. Uh, so I do want to leave up Lightning Bolt. And uh, I, I think bluffing a Counterspell makes more sense than bluffing a Path to Exile. Yeah, so Batter Skull's coming in. This Dreadhorde Arcanist can block Eternal Witness and Stoneforge or Stoneforge Mystic and save some damage there. Alright, they cycle to Triumph. I'm jealous of that too. I've been talking about it all league. <laughs> Haven't done it yet. It'll happen this game if I draw it. Okay, Yorion's in the hand. Or sweet, uncastable Yorion. Right, so they've connected with that. Another one. So this sort of fire and ice, probably. Yep. That's pretty good. Oh, no. All right, their hand was good against Blood Moon. So... I probably want to bolt in the end step, though if I do that I can't clear the 
germ. No, I think I have to do it all in one. Okay, Brazen Borrower, one of the best draws available to me. So, I'll play Colonnade. They're all mountains, it doesn't matter. And I can Brazen Borrow the Germ, and then uh, Bolt, Arcanist Bolt, the two Stone Forges. But they can still just cast. Um, sort of fire a nice next turn. They don't even need Stoneforge. So Stoneforge doesn't matter. I think that just passing, or I think Brazen Borrower on the Germ. Attack Opt is my best play right now. Because I do want to keep this momentum with Arcanist. That was the best card I could ask for. All right, so they bounce off each other. And now I have two bolts with which to control this sort of fire and ice. Like they put it into play, they go to equip, I bolt the creature, they go to equip again, I bolt that creature, then I attack, shoot the bolt out of the graveyard. And I also have Snap Bolt, so I can remove all of these creatures from play. Yeah, they're one mana short of equipping a third time. I hope. Even if they have the land drop, the bird can't attack this turn. Okay, good. Nice. All right. So I think that attacking with Arcanist and bolting Stoneforge Mystic, or no, I want to bolt Bird. Though Stoneforge Mystic can pick up and redeploy Batter Skull if I don't kill it. Uh, maybe I just kill them both. One, two, one, two. And I can still snap. Nope, I don't have double blue, so I can't snap remand anyway, so I might as well just kill them both. Okay, I need another island in play to get this Brazen Borrower down. Yeah, I think killing Bird proactively makes the most sense here, because we know they have Yorion, and Yorion can just blink the Batter Skull and reset it for free. CZ peasy, huh? All right, that's pretty good. That'll cash in some of these cards they don't need anymore. And it gives them a lot of idiots to carry. Sort of fire and ice. So I can snap bolt that, but I am running out of options here. I need to draw a braid. A braid? All right, Brazen Borrower will not actually buy any time. I'm just attacking here. Hoping they trade off with Snapcaster Mage. Of course they did not. They're too smart for that. Yeah, the problem is that this gives pro blue. So even if I bounce one of them, or I can bounce the sword in combat. Yeah, that's better. That's better. All right. That saves me the damage. Or the, the damage being... Um, them drawing an extra card and getting a shock out of it. Yeah, I would have bounced the token if they only had one, but as it stands, I'm just treading water to find in a braid. 
Like, a braid is the, the best straight-up answer I have. Oh, they can even equip sword post-combat. Oh, wow. They're giving me a second blue source. I will take it. Okay, so now my brazen borrowers are on. Let's draw a braid. Aether Gust. That doesn't help. <laughs> That's the same problem we had last turn. Yeah, the fact that they have two tokens is too big of a, an issue. And enough mana to re-equip. Alright, so... I think I just have to accept my beats here. And try to tempo them out with Brazen Borrowers in the end step. Yeah, this basic forest Utopia Sprawl start has been the entire game for them. Like, that's plan A, plan B, plan C. Alright, now they have the thickest elemental. Definitely need a braid now. I'd also take Path to Exile. Or to Fairy. Remand's not when I need it. Yeah, now that this thing is large and lifelinky, I actually have to answer it all the way. Like, I don't get to goof around and try to tempo it out anymore. 7, 8, 9, 10. I'm actually at 1 on board. And they weren't fooled into playing a, a spell pre-combat for me to remand. And I know their deck has Lightning Helix in it, so I need to watch out for that. I mean, I guess I should play this card. If they have Helix, I'm just dead, whatever. A Braid. Spell Queller, you don't particularly help. Yeah, so I need them to mess up. If they just play correctly, I can't win this game. I need to remand something into a braid. Like, I can play my Queller or play my Gust on Utopia Sprawl, remand it if I'm desperate, which might come up. All right, they're doing something. Oh, no, not that. That's the thing I can't interact with. That was just free damage out of the graveyard. Okay, now I'm dead. Well played. Blood Moon was not the monster I needed it to be, though it did a lot. Like, don't get me wrong. Uh, it did a whole lot. All right, I think Ashiok belongs in this deck. Uh, I, I forgot to calculate Stoneforge Mystic into the no shuffle uh, calculations during sideboarding last time. Uh, Remand might be worse than I want it to be, or is Aether Gust worse than Remand? Aether Gust was kind of bad. I think Remand will mostly do the same thing in most situations. Uh, Teferi is kind of a soft answer to an equipment. It's a good answer to a Batter's Call Germ. Is that where I want to be? Do I want to count on the Abrades? Is Queller better than Teferi? I think, I still think it is. All right, I'm going to play this deck as it is. Though so I could see an argument for putting Teferi in the deck. I just don't know what I would cut. Like you do have to play from ahead. Dreadhorde Arcanist is a huge deal. Ashiok and Blood Moon are my control elements. Like that's that's how a, a tempo deck like this controls a big deck like that. They just pinch off options of theirs. And now that they just got away with a game under Blood Moon, they're going to play around Blood Moon however they can, which is great because I only have one. 
And like if they do something like fetch basic planes and then three turns later they can't cast old pyromancer because they don't have red red, like those sort of things are gonna come up. Also, if they sideboard in a bunch of reclamation sages and shit uh, for my one blood moon, but they don't know I only have one. So yeah, they have to, they're doing some serious soul searching over there in their sideboard. I wonder if I'm supposed to have Jace in, and I don't think that I am, especially on the play. Like I, I just, I can obviously see situations where Jace would be insane, but I can also see them where I just like play it and I like brainstorm once, and then they attack it and it dies. Uh, I'll keep this. It's got a cantrip in it. Uh, this is a hand where I hold my triome because it will be better as a cycle. It's going to happen. All right, don't have to play around Stifle in this format. Oh no, I milled my Ashiok. I wanted that. Uh, so I think I will play Steam Vents tapped. I'm not going to bluff Remand or Brazen Borrower at right now. Just don't think it's worth it for their two drops. Like, if this was a deck that had an insane two drop, like if this was Storm, where I need to respect, like, Baral. Oh, fuck. I was like, they don't have any two drops. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I'm an idiot. Should have shocked in. Okay, whatever. We'll deal with it. So I can fetch another basic. Or I can just hold up Spell Queller. Though they're not going to spell quell cast into Spell Queller because they have Batter Skull. They're just going to jam that in. But I'm going to snap Thought Scour in the end step. All right, well, I have many answers to a Batter Skull in my deck. Just need to find them before it's too late. Uh, there goes Lightning Helix. That didn't really help anyway. Opt. Let's find that a braid. I'll take Brazen Borrower. And... So I'll put in Hallowed Fountain tapped. And I even get to attack. Because they put in Batter Skull, I bounce it, they take two. Oh cool. They're going all in on this Batter Skull right now. <laughs> that was a weird play. Uh, I guess they're playing around Lightning Bolt. I'm just going to do this now before they can hold up any nonsense. Oh god, do they have Veil of Summer? What are they doing? That would be shitty for me. I hope they don't have Veil of Summer, oh my god. Yeah, if there are one mana remaining answers... Okay, no, they were just fetching in response. Just making me sweat. Okay. Yeah, if they had a one mana answer, like, <laughs> there, uh, I think that would have been the whole game. Witness, getting back, land or Stoneforge? What does your hand need? It needs Stoneforge. All right. I have Spell Queller. I'm ready. Thought Scour. Continue scouring my thoughts. That is why I cast Thought Scour. So, they Stoneforge, they get something. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play my card. And I will represent some two mana counterspell. They probably won't respect it, 
I would be surprised if their hand can respect it. Wow, there's room for a lightning bolt in this deck. Just get everything. So the good news is Basic Mountain does not play around Blood Moon. Like that's just not important. All right, just dramatic pause like I'm thinking. Okay, resolves. It's a small edge. Like most people won't fall for like a thinking pause on Magic Online. But I am still going to make it. All right, fine. Yeah, maybe I just didn't settle into my defensive role like I was supposed to this game. Like if I just had Queller there, but then they would have had Bolt for Queller instead of Bolt for Arcanist. So if they have it, they have it. All right. Um, if I path Stoneforge Mystic, then. They have to cast the sword and I'm able to counter it. I just basically put Spell Queller face up on the table, shocking in a white source that I already had, and then passing the turn. Like if they're paying attention right now, they're just going to equip Batter Skull and serve for 6 damage. Unless they have another removal spell for my Queller, then they're going to just kill me with sort of fire and ice. How do we do? Am I dead? All right, well, I got the sword under me. Oh, they can Skyclave Apparition. Uh, okay. We're getting out controlled here for sure. And now the sword comes in with exactly enough mana to still equip it. Rough. All right. We're probably losing. I basically need to draw a braid right now. But we're about to take six damage and they draw a card on this board where they're already ahead. Rough, 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 rough. A braid? That's not a braid. Um, guess I can cycle for a braid. Oh, I found a braid. Is it too late? One, two, three, four. And it's pretty close to too late. Oh, they just equip Batter Skull and I lose. Yeah, if they equip Batter Skull, it's too late. The token that Skyclave Apparition makes is also conveniently blue, which is perfect for Sword of Fire and Ice decks. Uh, yeah, I'm dead. Alright, GG's. Got crushed by Stoneforge Mystic. I love their deck. I, I 5 would with a deck like this on the channel uh, a little while ago. If you scroll through my modern playlist, you'll find it. But these Yorion value piles are awesome. Big fan of those. Alright. On to the next round. And I'm on the play here. I'm going to keep this. I have a uh, remand or removal into Geist line. Doesn't have a two drop. But, well, it has two two drops, but they're both reactive. Uh, and I don't think that you can mulligan a hand like this. I don't think I could keep this on the draw, but because I'm on the play, it's a little more defensible. It's actually like reasonable to good on the draw on the play so nothing to complain about i do think this deck is desperate for some sort of one or two mana threat other than dreadhorde arcanist like in addition to not other than like maybe this deck should have sprite dragon in it it actually seems pretty good i wish i thought of that uh, before i started playing like probably turn the geiss and some number of teferi into sprite dragons well, I drew Dreadhorde Arcanist, so I'm going to play it. I think my opponent, their their deck is looking pretty stormy. So I definitely want to be ahead 
because you can't play from behind against Storm. Like, if you just counter this, remove that, whatever, then eventually they're going to overpower you. You need to be pressuring under. That That exchange still needs to happen, but you need to be applying pressure underneath it. So I guess the question right now is, do I jam Geist or leave up Queller? Uh, shit. <laughs> Uh, I think I'm going to cast Opt. Like, so I can Opt and leave up Remand. Or I could just Jam Geist, serve for one, take my medicine. I'm going to Jam Geist. I take it all back. We're Geisting. Uh, this is where I learned that they're not Storm, but they're some blue-red control deck with Anger of the Gods. Okay, so if I don't die this turn, like if they go like Baral, Ritual, 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 dead, then I fucked up, and I definitely could have beat that line. But if they don't have exactly that, like if they don't have the turn three goldfish, then they're getting pummeled this game. Like I have opt plus attack opt to find plus my draw step, so I have five looks to find my land to hold up Queller moving forward. I even played around Blood Moon by fetching this. Okay, so Bergy, they are in fact Storm. Uh, I think I'm just supposed to Lightning Helix. So I'll opt first. It's all the same to me. Bottom that. Uh, Helix this. Force of Negation is the card that I would like to find off my opt. There's only two of them, so it's not great odds, but I'm going to look. Okay, that was that was a solid turn. It's a little scary that they were able to play Bergy and then... Oh good, they didn't have a follow-up. Well, they get a second main phase. Yeah, if they... They could definitely... There are definitely reasonable distributions of five-card hands that just win the game right now. Turn three is tough. Turn four is definitely doable. But hopefully I can untap into this wall of counter magic that I'm holding. They're thinking about it. They're figuring out, do I gifts now or do I gifts on their turn? It's actually kind of interesting because if they cast gifts on given now, they're playing into force and negation. But if they wait till my turn, my mana's untapped. Tough call. All right, they figured it out. Yeah, unfortunately, the gifts, I don't have the Force of Negation, but I think they're definitely right to play it into tapped out mana. Drawing a blue source naturally would be pretty great. Like if I can go into next turn with double remand, because they're dead in two turns. I have seven damage in play and they're at 12. So I just need to survive the next turn, and if I can hit them with two disruptive things instead of one, that would be pretty nice. So I'm going to give them... What am I going to give them? I want to give them Electromancer and Baral. So that puts Metamorphose and Desperate Ritual into the graveyard. Just give them the two other things. That's redundant. You don't want two of those. So that was like the line I had to give them one card instead of two. All right, so now the game becomes, do I opt? Uh, if, if opt finds lightning bolt, they're just dead. So yes, I am going to opt. Or wait, no. Is Thought Scour better? Uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. No, because even if Thoughtscour mills a bolt, that doesn't make them dead. I think opt looking for land or bolt makes more sense. Uh, that one doesn't help. Fuck, should have been more specific about the land ask. So even if I miss on the land for Spell Queller, I still have Remand available.
Keep. All right, that'll do. That will counter the past in flames, the front and the back of it. Okay, so my plan is to remand the mana creature they play, and then they'll have to spend another two mana to redeploy it, then they'll have to go off with one mana through a Force of Negation. Noxious Revival for Desperate Ritual. Sure. Putting you to three against my untapped red mana. All right, fine. They got disrespectful and they got away with it. But the cool thing is, they know I didn't have Force of Negation two turns ago, so they might not play around it again here. Alright, yeah, just dead. Cool. Yeah, this feels like a matchup that we were kind of built to beat, and I'll take it. So Surgicals come in here. Damping Sphere comes in here. Built to crush. Uh, Aether Gust hits Past in Flames in a very important way, so it doesn't end up in the graveyard. Uh, a Braid messes with Brawls, but I'm not going to bring in a Braid. No chance. Uh, I am going to, I think I'm going to cut Path to Exile because between Lightning Bolt, Lightning Helix, uh, I Brazen Borrower, I think we can control that. The, their creatures in a better way than that doesn't ramp them. Ashiok is pretty potent graveyard hate. They don't have fetch lands. They do have gifts ungiven. So okay, uh, I like Ashiok. Does to fairy matter? Probably not. Yeah, like I'm not gonna want to tap out for Teferi on my turn at any point. Just. I'm going like full flash game here. The only card in my deck without flash right now is Geist of St. Traft. And I could cut it to go full flash, but that card hits the hardest. So on the draw, am I ever going to tap out for a three drop? And if I'm cutting Geist, what am I bringing in? Uh, is this where I bring in Aether Gust? Yeah, maybe I just go full flash threat game. Every single card in the deck, except Dread Horde Arcanist, is an instant right now. Oh, Damping Sphere, Ashiok. All right. So I have my best card that my deck's built around, and potent sideboard cards are the only cards that don't have flash. I'm going to try this. I'm a little worried that my beats will be too anemic, and they'll be able to push through, but I think I'm more worried about tapping out for a 3-drop that doesn't win the game. <laughs> wow. I'm going to keep. Yeah, this this hand is uh pretty hateful. So, I'm going to play my flooded strand. I'm going to play around there is a possibility of them going turn two Blood Moon. That is a thing that their deck is capable of. Okay, uh, I'll just bolt that. And if they have Blood Moon, they have Blood Moon. Bolt this, untap, jam, damping sphere. Is damping sphere more important than Dreadhorde Arcanist? Yeah, I think so. Fuck them. Yeah, if I could curve Damping Sphere into Ashiok, that will probably also just end the game. Old Manamorphosing into Damping Sphere. Because they could see our visions, or they could just concede. Yeah. That'll do. On to the final round, playing for the positive record. I'm on the play with a pretty nice hand. I'm going to keep it. There's no pressure in this hand, but there is a nice string of 
removal and cantrips up to spell queller. So uh, I don't think this is a mulligan. This might be a trap, but if you're going to mulligan hands like this, I think that means that the deck just doesn't function. So I'm going to keep it. I'm still thinking about Sprite Dragon, though. So disappointed I didn't think of that. All right, so I think that holding up painless mana for remand is fine here. Like, I could have also just gambled that they're not going to cast a spell I care about and play my fetch land, then I get to opt and fetch for free. Um, all right, yeah, Kroxa can take my island from my hand. I guess I should opt in response to this. That makes more sense. That gives me more choices of what to discard. Uh, don't need that. Okay. Yeah, I'll take three and discard the island. All right. I live with regret. <laughs> yeah, playing the fetch land worked out better that way, but I, I don't think I'm going to be, like, upset with myself about that. It was also perfectly reasonable that they just play, like, I don't know, Stoneforge Mystic or Tarmogoy for some shit. But now Queller's on, Vendillion Click's on, we're ready to party. That's a good one to quell. Right, getting a red source. The Jeskai have assembled. All right, so now I have Queller backed by some other spells. They also mold to five. So I'm doing okay here. I am going to shock in. Like, I'm the beatdown right now. I need to V-click plus... I probably should have V-clicked in their draw step. <laughs> Whoops. But uh, maybe not, because re if they tap out for anything, remand is insane here. Red Boar. Well, this is kind of dangerous because if they have a land drop, I'm in trouble. Like, they just get to do the same thing again. But if they don't, that was an insane time walk. Bummer. Okay. You get your Pyromancer. Yeah, Mardu is uh, definitely known for its removal spells. So pretty, pretty robust removal there. And all of this fuels the Croxa. So they can actually Croxa next turn. Wow, do you also have a discard spell? Yikes. All right, this is a pretty good five card hand. Oh no, the Seasoned Pyromancer just cashed in two cards for different ones. I'm just going to let Thoughtseize resolve because I want the path for Croxa next turn, but I also want the Bolt for Pyromancer now. Like, I, I just want all these cards for different reasons. Yeah, I thought they would take that one. Croxa is the important thing that's happening right now. So I could Bolt Season Pyromancer. I could Bolt their face. Or... So nine... Yeah, I think I just want to go face with this bolt. I'm not going to win a control game against Croxa. So I'm going to put a stop in their draw step. Or no, because they're just going to Croxa anyway. Maybe I should Thought Scour myself now. Yeah, that makes sense. Because I'm not using all this mana anyway. And if I find Dread Horde Arcanist... Alright, yeah, that, okay, that's a shitty card that I'm happy to discard to Croxa. Okay, so here's the plan. They tap out for Croxa, I discard Force of Negation. 
I end step Vendillion click, draw a land, attack for seven in the air. And race them. I could also click myself, but that doesn't matter because Force of Negation is the perfect card to discard here because it's both not important and doesn't deal me three damage. All right, so my plan actually just doesn't work. Uh, for some reason in my brain, they were already at six. I think I shortcutted a whole turn of attacks. <laughs> yeah, I'm just fucking dead. I need to draw Path to Exile is what needs to happen here. Okay, so Mountain is the card in their hand. I'm going to fetch for the Triome. I don't want to draw this land that comes into play tapped. So, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Uh, yeah, I'm dead in every direction. Didn't draw the land anyway. Um, yeah, Crocs is real good. I just didn't do the math right on that. Yeah, I think <laughs> for some reason my brain said because I flash in Vendillion Click, it deals 3 immediately, and then I get to attack for 7 with them at 6, but that's not actually how math or pacing works. Do I have an out here? Uh, I can jump Croxa, block Season Pyromancer, and I end up taking three, four, five. I'm at two, and then Dreadhorde Arcanist can clap back. Actually, Arcanist, Flashing Bag Bolt, and uh, with Colonnade, that's four, five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> that's still not enough. All right. If they crack this fetch land, I can kill them. If if they crack the fetch land and I draw a fetch land or basic land, because I'll be at two, so I can't shock in a land, but I could fetch a land. Yeah, bad news bears. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, I'm dead if I attack with Vendillion Click because the Croxa trigger deals three, and then the other four is right here. So, yeah, I have blocks that put me to two. This Arcanist also can just flash back path. they could like settle into some control version where they only attack with Croxa. Leave me at four instead of and them not dead to attacks. If all of these are attacking, I feel like Season Pyromancer should be attacking too. Okay, what does this do? The trigger puts me to four. So Block with this. I have Path to Exile at the very least, though I'm still dead to these things. Lightning Helix, I think, is my best draw. Ho 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 ho! You don't say! Okay, so get rid of that. If they triple block, I'll roast Season Pyromancer. But oh, they didn't block at all. I like that. Okay, cool. So you're saying there's a chance. Okay, so I... Lightning Helix, probably a token and not the Season Pyromancer because Season Pyromancer can create blockers. Uh, 
and now they are dead to a, an untapped land with the colonnade. Book. All right, I guess I should just scour myself and see what I draw and make decisions. Uh, more of the same, huh? Oh, Geist. All right, well, I have a blocker now. All right, so do I lightning bolt upstairs? Yeah, because that leaves them dead to the angel token next turn. This has been a weird game. I'm dead to Lightning Bolt right now. Because they have two attackers, so they can put me to three. They're fetching to two. They have one card in hand. The card is not a removal spell, or they would have removed Arcanist last turn. It's not Lightning Bolt, or I would have died last turn. So, it's, uh... Up to this top deck. Do you attack with everything or attack with nothing? All right, so attack with everything. What could do two damage, but not three damage? I guess Kolagon's command. So this could be a bluff. Like, if I trade off with season pyromancer that's their path to victory yeah i think that leaving geist in play i'm dead to lightning bolt either way so i'm i'm gonna choose to play around uh them bluffing and not play around Colagon's command shit oh it's lingering souls all right i mean that's still a nightmare but it's not Colagon's command So Lightning Bolt off the top wins it. Lightning Helix off the top wins it. Cantrip off the top keeps digging. Opt out of the graveyard uh, gives me another look. Come on, deck. Remand. Not quite what I was looking for. Time to pummel in, though. Yeah, Opt is better than Thought Scour here. Come on, deck. Hello! Alright, we did it. Crazy game. Right, they're going to one. All right, splat. It's possible that if their hand is bolt, I lose here because you can't remand it hard enough. But if it's any two mana spell or nothing, then I win. Wow, that was a great game. I thought for sure I lost it. Yeah, that they made a weird decision with Croxa not to push for max damage. Like they played not to lose instead of playing to win, and it gave me an out that I probably shouldn't have had. But Cool, I'll take it. All right, Timely Reinforcement's going to be very good here. Celestial Purge is good. Lingering Souls is horrifying. Uh, Surgical Aether Gust. Aether Gust is good against Croxa. Bad against Lingering Souls. Uh, Blood Moon might be pretty good in this matchup. It does it hurt me more than it hurts them is the big question. I think this might be a Jace matchup too, because this is going to get grindy. Maybe not. Yeah, they do have a... But they have Dreadbore and Burn spells, which are good against Jace. Lingering Souls pressures Jace a lot. Yeah, that's not going to be how this goes. So, great against Croxa, great against 
Lingering Souls, or at least keeps up with Lingering Souls. I don't know if it's great. Um, Geist is pretty bad in this matchup. They have flying blockers and lots of them. Path is good. Teferi, probably not the best. Spell Queller seems kind of dangerous too. Force Negation is probably not super important here either. So Teferi does take a lot of pressure off things I have to worry about. So I'm bringing in four cards and taking out five right now. Do I want Blood Moon, a Braid, Aether Gust, Jace? Surgical also has options, but I think if we bring in much more reactive spells, then we're going to have too few proactive spells, and I do need to actually get over the finish line and win this game. Gust is good against Young Pyromancer and Croxa. Jace bad against basically everything except an empty board. A braid, really bad. It's I think it's Blood Moon. Okay. That's the play. They might be a deck that boards into Blood Moon themselves. And if so, then we're going to have like a kind of silly game where we both have a hand tied behind our back. But I think it's okay. This hand's reasonable. I'll keep it. Needs a third land, but we got time to draw it. We have a discard spell right away. That's okay, because my hand is full of threats. I have two copies of the best card. I'm unlikely to mulligan against this deck unless my hand is just a full no lander. Like you, you don't mulligan any playable seven against the deck with discard spells because then you end up with uh, like a perfect five that collapses immediately. Lightning Bolt was a great draw. So if they jam Young Pyromancer this turn, it just dies. And everyone's a winner. Except them. Only me. Alright. Now they can strip the bolt if they want to. But yeah, they're just going after my three drops. It's interesting that they could have taken both Arcanus and just didn't. So I wonder what they're up to over there. I'm pretty sure I just want to get an Arcanist into play. Uh, Liliana of the Veil vale would punish that play, but it's good against like everything else. I could get basic planes here because I have the dual land that already makes the other colors. I'm just trying to think of what if they jam Blood Moon right now. I'll get a basic island. I can get planes next turn. Island's more important. It's also pretty likely they just don't have Blood Moon. So a cantrip is a great draw. Either Thought Scour or Opt. Just get this Arcanus to work. I don't really want to fire off a main phase bolt just to do three extra damage. Kind of want to save that for removing creatures and planeswalkers. I was saying. Alright, forget about Blood Moon. I'm just getting a water a uh, Hallowed Fountain here. Shocking it in. I want to play from ahead right now, and that's what I'm doing. Path to Exile, good stuff. Oh, I even milled into an Opt. I'd rather cast that right now. Yeah, like if they boarded in Surgical Extraction to counter Dreadhorde Arcanus triggers, I'm still going up a card off that exchange. Yeah, Cling to Dust is, is good enough. Uh, that one actually... Uh, is a, a clean exchange compared to surgical, so not bad. But that's fine. If they spent their whole third turn doing that instead of uh, casting spells, I'm in. I'm going to jam the second Arcanist here. Uh, getting ahead 
with double arcanist instead of holding up remand because this one this one arcanist with just thought scour in my graveyard to cast is not gonna win the game by itself and i want to be far ahead before i start holding up remand Plus, if they just have, like, Fatal Push, Remand's not going to save my creature. So running out the second Arcanist, in a way, counters a removal spell already. All right, what you got? What's left in the tank over there? Yeah, sure, whatever. So they don't have a lot of great options here, because Arcanist can cast two of those cards. Croxa. If this is Croxa, I'll discard Lightning Bolt to it. Collective Brutality. Okay, they're just in discard mode. Taking the remand, sure. <laughs> I was just going to say, Opt would be the perfect draw here. Just refill my entire hand. Red Horde Arcanus is fucked up. Bummer. It's all right. We're still reloading. Uh, that is good, but not for a while. Yeah, I want to keep forward momentum here. There's nothing I can do for one mana, so I'm just going to pass with the, the Thought Scour Bolt available. Like, if they draw a discard spell, I can just fire off both my things and blank it. Crap. All right. Now we are both on empty. I have a cantrip, though. Let's try to get there. Did board out my guys. Just milled another Arcanist. All right, awkward mode now. Whoever finds the payoff first is going to get there. I'm slightly regretting bottoming the Celestial Colonnade. What are they doing? Oh, they have uh, Cling. That makes sense. Yep. So they have a cantrip of their own here. I think they can cling once with their current graveyard. They have 10 cards, including the cling. Yeah, it's just exit. Yeah, escape is five on that. I'm just really scared of lingering souls. Nice. Spell queller is a great answer to lingering souls. So it is, oh, did you draw souls just at the wrong time? But the question is, what were they holding onto last turn? Is it nothing or is it a removal spell to just set these souls free? I could have bolted my own Queller in response to a trigger, which exiles Lingering Souls forever. Uh, I'm not sure if that would have been right. Like, it's actually pretty close. Fuck. All right. That was a blowout. Yeah, so bolting souls in response, or bolting Queller in response, would have been super tight, but also, like, I don't know. Like, am I actually at the point where it's Lingering Souls is GG and it's worth two for one myself. But I guess Lingering Souls is a four for one, so probably. Yeah, I don't think I can actually beat Lingering Souls right now from this position. So, should have taken the line. Uh, 
uh, as horrific as it feels, I think I should be lightning bolting this thing. These souls just start absorbing the damage. Ugh. Yeah, this is a game where Jace would be pretty good. And yeah, maybe I'll bring Jace in for game three. This looks like something I'll be able to purge. Oh wow, the straight up draw two season pyromancer. Nothing to discard, but you still draw two. Okay, Brazen Borrower does tangle with souls in a, a way that is a little bit helpful. I can clear these souls. There are three answers to 1-1 one, one spirit tokens in my hand right now. Another one of these. Are they discarding Croxa straight up? Uh, Blood Moon. All right, they also boarded in Blood Moon. Good to know. Yeah, this uh, parade of pyromancers has been not good. Like they're at a higher life and have more creatures than me, so I think that trading off, trying to save damage until I figure out a way through this, is somehow still just better than clocking them. Okay, so they had a second Blood Moon. I have no more white mana, but I just cast most of my white cards. <laughs> that was the card I wanted for the last every turn. All right. So I can't Lightning Helix even if I draw it, which is the best card I have to pace this situation. Oh, they just drew a card that draws cards, and it's also a 4-4. Four, four. Yeah, this one's over. All right, I'm going to concede. I don't want them to see that I have Ashiok in. I'm going to board out Blood Moon. If they're boarding it in too, then I'll just play around it. So... Blood Moon out. I think on the play, I want ways to win the game back in. So Geist, Geist, and Jace. Um, Teferi really isn't great. Like Teferi can mess with Kaya's Guile, I guess. It can bounce Blood Moon, but I'll just play through Blood Moon. Celestial Purge also answers Blood Moon. I can cast every spell in my deck under Blood Moon. Maybe the Force of Negations need to be in just out of respect for Lingering Souls. Is Force better than Queller just on that axis? Like, Queller, like we saw last game, they play a lot of removal. And maybe I just can't rely on Queller to do what I needed to. Alright, I'm going to do this. I'm really not interested in bringing in Surgicals or Lingering Souls, because that only even works if they pass priority in between playing it and flashing it back. And even if it does, like, quote-unquote work, it's still, like, not very good. Because I'm still facing down two souls, and I don't have black mana, so I have to take two damage to exile it. So I would end up taking four, and still have to deal with two souls, and that's all assuming they don't pass priority. Yeah, I'm not interested in surgical extraction here. And my hand is pretty redundant here. My threats are pretty comparable. I'm likely to fetch for a basic land anyway, so I'm not going to fetch in the end step. All 
Alright, so now I can fetch island planes if I need to. I'm probably just going to do it regardless and hope that they don't have Shadow of Doubt. Uh, the flurry of discard spells. You can never count on your opening hand. Just look at the lands and see if they're good and then keep it based on that because the spells aren't going to be there anymore. So they're stripping my threats one by one. I think I'm still not going to fetch. Right, drawing the planes is exciting. That means I can fetch Island Island, and I have double blue if they go for Blood Moon. Would have preferred a spell, of course, but just I, I'm never sad about having perfect mana. I don't think they would jam Blood Moon here. That seems like such a spew. I'm wasting your your turn three on. Though if they are holding Lingering Souls and want to like try to bait me with Blood Moon, like I would somehow spend my Precious Force of Negation on that. So I can purge this thing. It is awkward that I don't want to fetch my... Like, now that Planes is in my hand, I don't want to fetch it and shock. Like, I do want to get basics. Oh, well, that actually sucks a lot. Uh, it's fine. I'm not going to give up the tempo of playing around that. So I'm going to get a Hallowed Fountain and shock it in. And I'll fetch a basic island at this point. I've drawn enough lands. Let's start getting them out of the deck. This is kind of a tough call because they definitely have removal at this point. Oh, whatever. Is what it is. They have perfect information. At least this 1 3 checks their 1 1. And they discarded a removal spell last turn to their Pyromancer, so they must have a grip full of them. Yep, that's fine. Uh, okay, so I can cycle or I can play this as a, in a mountain, and I'm pretty sure. So if I cycle it and hit a cantrip, I, get, I go off. Yeah, I'm just going to cycle it. Let's find a cantrip off this. Show me Thought Scour. Yes! Never fails. All right, so Thought Scour myself again. Graveyard is now nice and juicy. Drawn two extra cards, or one extra card this turn. And I have Force of Negation up, and they can't cast Lingering Souls till they find their planes anyway. I hope they get caught under their own Blood Moon, honestly. Like, they can't cast Kaya's Guile or Lingering Souls right now. Inquisition. Yeah, sure. Take a look. See what you like. They could strip the force and then lightning bolt Arcanist, and I'm kind of behind again. But I think it's fine. Not like I can do anything about it. Backup remand. I can opt out of the graveyard right now. Right, so they clearly don't have Lightning Bolt. Hell yes. Okay, so now it's time to burn them out. I have Double Bolt, plus Helix, plus Dreadhorde Arcanist, and Remands. Like, this is the, the tempo end game. I like that I can Double Bolt and cast Remand this turn. Like, that's the, the full banana 
party. Because these are bananas. Bananas deal three damage. I'm pretty sure they're locked under their own Blood Moon right now. Okay, I mean, Nile Spell Bomb's pretty good. That does slow down the Arcanist beats. I'm going to bolt them in the end step, and I guess I'll Helix them also. Like, they're going to have to pop the spell bomb when I go after the bolt now, and then that leaves the bolt in this bolt for next turn. Yeah, sure. Still beaten down. Still have a handful of interaction. If they can remove my Arcanist, I am in trouble. But I do have a, a lot of time to tread water here. So they've drawn two cards since the last time they couldn't remove my Arcanist. I can also path my own Arcanist if I feel like getting the second island is something I need to do. But they did already discard and exile two of my three double blue spells. So, like, this is the moment of truth. But with their deck full of shit, like, I, I don't want to... I'm not going to fight over this. I'll remand their payoff. Like, now they get to be down with... Elemental for a little while. I can remove it at will, but I think holding up answers makes more sense because I'm very lucky and we'll just draw the, the thing that I want anyway. I decided to leave up Remand or Bolt instead of uh, Path or Bolt or Path or Remand. I don't really want to path them at all because that'll unlock all the white cards that are definitely in their hand right now. Nice. So now I can double remand and also just cast that remaining Brazen Borrower in my deck. And Jace is now castable. To the dome. Yeah, that Nile spell bomb uh, that saved them three life, they would be at one right now instead of four. That's a big deal when I have one power in play. But it's so nice when your opponent boards in the same card you did, so you don't have to board it in. It's like I boarded in Blood Moon, but I didn't have to, and I got to keep the slot in my deck. <laughs> Lightning Bolt. Alright, fine. We're in slow motion now. Alright, they're at three. That's the magic number. So, Helix or Bolt off the top at this point. Get it done. There are two Bolts, one Helix left in the deck, I believe. Okay, I am going to remand this, even though they can replay it again, just for the velocity. Like, this is another relook at for Bolt or Helix. All right, yeah, that's fine. Uh, Snapcaster is also a threat that can win this game. I don't think I'm going to deploy Snapcaster just in the end step right now like this. Because they're not at two. They're at three. Yeah, opt, snap, opt. Looking for bolts. This is the kind of plan I'm looking for. Like, they have really cool disruptive elements and discard and better removal than me, but I have blue cards. And in a game like this, I'd rather be the blue deck. Um, that's actually great because it fuels Snapcaster. Because all th the card I draw plus the uh, multiple cards I mill, the two cards I mill, all three of the cards become live. 
I don't think I want to scour now, though, because if I do that, then I don't have remand for their turn, and also that plays into sorcery speed graveyard exile. Fuel me up. Uh, Milda Geist, found Arcanist. That's actually great because now they have to respect this, and I'm still have Snapcaster locked and loaded. That also is the extra power to make the Snapcaster lethal. Cling to dust, targeting Dreadhorde Arcanist. Okay, they're they're on life gain mode. Yeah, that's fine. If they're worried about their life total more than they're worried about drawing cards to stay competitive in the game, then I'm going to let them have that. I'm just really worried about them drawing basic planes. They probably play one, and I bet their hand has several white cards in it right now that I would not be able to beat. Alright, so the... The cling does make Snapcaster pretty awkward. But it makes Remand... Does it make Remand good? Prob oh yeah, because they only have one black source. Yeah, Remand is really good. So I think I want to Scour. Yeah, Scour sees the most things. They... Alright. Scour myself. Keep the, the fuel flowing. They didn't want to cling that, that's interesting. Unless they really are just on mono life gain mode. So is this where I remand? No, I think I want to save... Oh, they are going after op now? Okay, now I want to remand. Does that even matter? Yeah, they're currently tapped out, uh, though I don't have anything else in the graveyard, so, all right, whatever. Now they can cling my remand. Yeah, you can have that. That's a redraw. Still not a planes, not a basic planes anyway. All right, so Brazen Borrower, because I have double blue, is very good. I get to opt here because they don't have black. Dreadhorde Arcanist. It is fitting that we end this league with the, the craziest display of Dreadhorde Arcanist that we've had in the whole league. Yeah, they don't have enough cards for Kling right now. Uh, Bolt does change that a little, but that's fine. So they bolt this, and then I cast Brazen Borrower. Oh wow, are they just clinging right now? If they cast Cling right now, I'm going to remand instead of Brazen Borrower. Yeah. Snapcaster, remand. Because this doesn't change the clock, it just, uh, it actually does change the clock because they don't gain three life, so this is way better. All right, Blood Moon actually did just save them here, but it saved me the whole game so far. It puts you to two. So I could snap opt looking for so i okay so i know that they have cling in hand but the remand's still good against it next turn so yeah i'll just pass they have to beat my board and my hand uh okay that might be able to beat my board and my hand how do i want to play this um no brazen borrower still beats this watch them discard two white cards here Told you. 
All right, remanding lingering souls is pretty dope here. Uh oh, uh oh. They found the planes. All right, I don't care about magmatic channeler. The only thing I care about is lingering souls. Are they not flashing it back? Okay, so how does this work? They're holding cling and various removal spells. If I go to snap opt, that's no good. I think I just need to play Brazen Borrower. So Kaya's Guile is very good right now. Oh wow, they let me get to my turn. I think they're dead. The Reman should shut the door. Unless they have multiple spells. Alright, so they're gonna cling, and I'll reman the cling. So they don't gain three life. If they have removal spell for borrower, that still plays. Alright, we did it. Locked under their own blood moon for way too long. Alright, so we got some cool games out. Um, the we got absolutely crushed by a grindier like two for one control deck, that, which is not a surprise. Uh, we got cheesed out by Mill. Yeah, that the deck with main deck graveyard interaction against our deck trying to go off from the graveyard. Uh, definitely not good. Then uh, we beat everything else. Got some good games out of it. The storm matchup felt like a breeze. Uh, that's exactly the sort of matchup this deck is built to beat. Didn't play against any of the the lands decks, the primeval titans decks. So uh, hard to say on that. Didn't play against any super aggro decks. Uh, we actually somehow played against Mardu Pyromancer versus Jeskai Tempo in the last round, like it's 2015. That was weird. But this deck was fun. Um, I, wa I want to change a bunch of the cards into Sprite Dragons. Like I think that Geist and probably some number of Queller or Teferi should just be Sprite Dragon. Maybe go up to three or four Force of Negation because... If you're going to tap out for a Sprite Dragon on your turn, you want to protect it on theirs. Uh, Remand was... I did like Remand. Um, it's also possible that you just don't want to be Jeskai. Like if, if you really want to just put the foot on the gas and tempo folks out in Modern uh, with this sort of build, like if we're cutting Geist and shaving Queller or Teferi for Sprite Dragons... Then we're only white for two path two helix, and that comes at the cost of smoother mana. Like you get way more basics, and I guess you lose celestial colonnade as well. Which I think it came up once in this league that it was good and won me the game, or maybe zero times. I forget, but it it would would have been good a couple times. Um, yeah, it. If I were very serious about winning matches with this deck, I would explore straight blue-red and see what that looks like. Uh, blue-red Prowess is already a deck that exists, and I suspect that this would just be worse than that if you are trying to be clever just for the sake of being clever. So uh, I guess blue-red Prowess is what this deck is trying to do, but this deck is a little bigger with the Quellers and the Teferis. Yeah, it's it's close. Uh, I, I don't think that I could take this deck into a tournament and feel good about playing like nine rounds at a Star City or whatever. Uh, it's fine for a league, uh, but get your Sprite Dragons in there. Every game where we were ahead felt good, and every game where we were behind felt bad. And that's exactly what Abed said uh, when they sent me the list, and it, it is c consistent with my experience. So Sprite Dragons... Maybe cut the white altogether, and that's where I would take the deck. So, Abed, thanks for the list. I had fun playing it. Everyone, thanks for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and come back next time.